Hi folks, Jonathan, Spiritual Speakeasy. Uh, thank you very much for joining us once again. And um, another in the series of Life's Inspirers, chatting to people who I feel um, inspire and give hope to many people out there, particularly through these very challenging times. And uh, so many awakening souls in the world. And it's a very hard time for a lot of people that are going through that awakening period right now. And if this is the first time that you're tuning in, well done. Why didn't you do it before? Uh, you've passed the test, so that's good stuff. And uh, if you're not quite sure what the speakeasies are all about, I like to think that uh, they offer a place where people can come. Embrace free thinking. Now there's a concept. Uh, open debate. Yeah, I like that idea. And the freedom to talk about topics which um, most people in the right mind wouldn't even touch with a barge pole. So there you go. Hopefully that sums up the speakeasy. Um, so I'll just go through this little bit first. It's the boring bit where you have to subscribe and you have to hit the bell icon and do that, please, because it helps to get the message out. So that'd be wonderful if you can do that. Amazing. Um, so with all that out of the way, you'll probably notice two two guys that have joined me uh, for this episode. Um, you may or may not know them, but I'll tell you what that as soon as they start talking, you'll know exactly who they are. So I'm going to introduce them anyway. I'm over the moon that these two guys can uh, join me uh, here right now. And um, none other than Dom and Chris Waterson, AKA The Sheep Farm. So uh, welcome, gents. Good evening, brother is on. Nice <laughs> to see you again, Jonathan. And you, yeah, and you. I was just saying to uh, Chris, the last time I saw him, he was completely in the dark. Uh, not in the kind of uh, information sense, because that's not <laughs> happening. Uh, but um, definitely in a lighting sense. So it's great to be able to see you guys. And uh, I think a lot of people probably never never seen you before. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I might be wrong on that. Um, they, they know your voices. Um, and you know what? It was that time when I kind of first uh or we first made contact and it was um through mark devlin of course and uh the um the moment was where i was listening to one of your podcasts and i thought flipping heck these guys sound like they're on my doorstep you know and uh <laughs> not realizing that you were only across the other side of huddersfield so how magic was that and i was kind of tuning into your I think it's your most recent mint sauce. Um, mm. And you were talking about Huddersfield and somebody was making a statement about Huddersfield. Um, and also, I think I picked up as well that somebody was uh, saying to you guys, you know, are you genuine? You know, they were kind of implying that uh, you might have been a bit kind of, you know, working for some surreptitious organisation. Um, but uh, I, I'll probably touch on that one a little bit later, actually, because I think it's important. You know, um, some people sadly get get actually stuck down the rabbit hole, and yeah, it it's nice to actually come out and see the daylight sometimes. But anyway, what personally grabbed me about you guys was uh, when I listened to you. Apart from the fact that I thought, "Crikey, they're on my doorstep," was. Um, your style, really, the way that you do uh, the podcasts. Um, it's just so easy, so laid back. Uh, no nonsense. It's more of a lack of, Jonathan. Say again, Chris. <laughs> more of a lack of style. Than lack style. of style, yeah, lack of style, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, whatever you think, Chris, I think it comes across very well. Oh, thanks. Um, and besides the really easy, relaxed style that you've got, you guys, is the extensive research that you do behind your subjects and I think that that absolutely shines out every time you know um, you, you really do uh, deserve that massive following that you've accumulated and it's only a very short time 
How long have you actually been going on the sheep farm, guys? Do you want me to start, Chris? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I sort of started um, 2019 with a YouTube channel, the first sheep farm one. Uh, that got turned off last 18 months ago, January, uh, thanks to our benevolent uh, friends at, uh, the, at Google. Um, and I'd been making sort of like little docu-type series seven of this stuff that I'd written quite a few years ago. And I didn't know how to put it down because I didn't understand film editing or anything like that. So I decided to put them down. Didn't even know how to open a YouTube account. I got my mate to do it. And uh, and then I sort of been nagging Chris to come on board for a long time saying we should be doing this. And I think when the nonsense kicked off in 2020, that sort of... I was saying to Chris, look, this is our time. This is why this is why we're here. This is why we've built up this knowledge um, over the last 20 years or so, in fact, quite longer. Um, for now, we've got to get ourselves out there. And so that's how we, how we started. I said, but if we do do it, it's got to be something uh, different because we don't want to do what, what other people have done not because there's anything wrong with what other people do. Like we mentioned Mark, Mark Devlin, he's got his particular style, he's done his, what he's done, that works, that's his, that's his. And there's other people that do their thing. We, we wanted something new. So I think the dynamic of me and Chris um, taking the piss out of each other constantly <laughs> um, sort of works with the seriousness of the subjects. I think because the fact that it like uh, the load. Yeah, your brothers as well. You know, because um, I think that makes a little bit of a dyna dynamic too, uh, even if mm. I don't say it properly, that is. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> you know, let's be honest, for two brothers to come together like like what you've done there with the sheep farm, um, I think that's uh, pretty amazing, you know. Uh, I mean, you might, you know, give each other a good kicking off, uh, off air, but um, the fact that you you do really bounce off each other, don't you? You really resonate with each other. You bounce off each other, and it's nice that you have both got your own kind of uh, angles from where you're coming from. You know, you're not exactly you're not like twins, are you? You're not kind of uh, separated at the hip type of thing. You really do have your own thoughts, your own opinions, uh, and that comes across, you know, through the uh, through the podcasts and the the Mint Sauce Chronicles. And, um, you know, another thing I, I, I love about you guys is that you, you you expose all these lies, you know, about people who need exposing, I would say, really. Yes. Um, the, 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 they're there, they're putting themselves up on the world stage, um, telling us how we should live our lives. And then you guys come along and say, look, you know, did you know such and such about this guy or this, this lady or whatever it might be? and um, really digging deep uh, into... I think the beauty about it is, Jonathan, that it, it's the simplicity of it. Um, yeah. We're not trying to be uh, clever or um, tell people what they should be doing. What we do is we lay out a, a trail of evidence for people to make their own minds up. Because if you've... And that's from a personal perspective. That's why, like, a two, three, four hour program to get the evidence down or even a series because then there's no sort of argument of that you know they can't deny that Tony Blair did this because it's there it's in the mainstream it's not it's when you see it all together that it becomes a whole picture yeah oh absolutely and uh, and you guys do that so well um without bamboozling people you know well, to be fair, Jonathan, the way we do do it when we talk was because we, I think we're both we're both frustrated. You were ahead of me, weren't you, Don? Because you were doing your mm. you did those seven shows. Mm. But the way we talk on the phone on a daily basis is exactly how we do mint sauce. The only difference is with mint sauce is a bit of a little bit of research and a few bullet points. Um, but literally, that's how we chat on the phone. And it got yeah. to a point where Don were bugging me that much to do it, even before the nonsense actually. Um, but I just didn't have the time, and he he, he was going on about it. And then when the nonsense started, it became kind of essential to lift up them uh, stones and show the little rats that are underneath them, I suppose. Um, yeah. 
but it was just how we always talked on it though yeah uh, oh yeah i mean the amount of times we talked and we you, you kept saying we've got, to, we've got to do something we've got to do but we didn't really know what direction and it was his research for the first matt wancock on it i think that was, that's what kicked it off but um the amount of times we had a conversation he'd go we should have recorded that we just discovered we just covered about five different topics that we should have talked about and it was it was more frustration we wanted them, I think. <laughs> well, it, 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 the, ti- the timing the timing's got to be right for me. I'd uh, start, I'd done loads of research about health for my uh, the Lyme disease that me and my wife were going through, and so and my sort of business mind not necessarily it's about making money, but the the process of having a business is more 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 the fact that you've got to do research, you've got to make sure what you're doing right, and you've got to then execute the plan if you like, you know? And it's the same principle when I start doing research and I've just head off in a little tangent there, but you don't really know where it's going to lead. So there's a bit of unknown uh, in there, but when you start seeing the pieces come together, then you can start molding it. So then meet the flock because them early ones were all new to me as well. And when I delivered them, when we, Chris had never heard them. So the beauty about it was that when we did Matt and Cock, Rita, and the Boris ones, apart from a bit of research that you did, Chris, you'd not heard them. Down, yeah. yeah, you'd not yeah. heard them because uh, he was working. So, so my I, surprise was genuine a lot of the time. Yeah. When, when yeah. So, so the conversation in between those, uh, sort of like the reason it went on for an hour and a half, two hours, uh, an episode, is because of the conversation, the points it brought up and that we could talk around it. And uh, I think that's, it, it's it's real. That's the thing, what it is. It's, Real, real research. And I'm not saying that because I did the research. It's real research that is in the mainstream. There is no yeah. arguing that Boris Johnson is related to Queen Elizabeth, yeah. or Tony Blair is related to Charlemagne. It's in the mainstream. Yeah. It's there. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, to, just to mention as well, Jonathan. We sort of come from different angles. Because we're very similar, me and Dom, in a lot of ways. Same sense of humour and all that lot. Mm. But we're like we're literally like chalk and cheese when we're growing up. Yeah. You were sport billy, business mind. I was artifate chef. Um, I was always into the. He was always into. He's gone. Well, as you got older, you were into the health thing. You, need, you need to start like, that bit again. More esoteric. <laughs> we lost um, you there for a moment. Lost you there for about ten seconds, Chris. The, oh, really? the, the yeah. um, teleporter wasn't working very well. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you are you still in one piece? That's the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just saying that we, we although we've got we share a sense of humour and an outlook on life, I think it's very similar. But um I've always been an artifate kind of person, I would describe it as into the esoteric and slightly stranger stuff than Dom. He was always into like even growing up, wasn't it, Dom? You were into JFK and and military stuff and things like that and looking into things like that. I was always into unexplained and ghosts and weird, weird, weird stuff. Mm. Um, so we, we bring a different angle to it. He yeah. brings a bit very business-like angle to it. Yeah. And I bring more of a, I don't know, I don't, actually don't know what I bring to it, like more of a feeling. Um, I don't well, you, know. You're a, you try and be a bit more off, off the cuff, um, even though you're not really. Um, you're quite organised, really. But mm. you do try and bring more off the cuff. And I, I'm, I'm not particularly well organised, ironically. That's why I have to be organised. It sounds a bit. If I'm if I'm not organised, then it all goes to rat shit. Yeah. Um, but we still, just to be fair, we still find it as feet. How we done? We're still yeah. messing around with stuff, yeah. trying different techniques and different ways of doing it. But um, yeah, we love doing those mint sauces and stuff. But we love it though. It's yeah, cool. I mean, I I, I enjoy the research. Uh, I, I think my business it suits my mindset because I, I started doing a bit today and I thought oh, I've got to put it down. Because it were only for that thing we're doing tomorrow night, Chris. Yeah. I, I thought I'll just do ten minutes on uh, what platinum is, because we do, we mentioned the platinum jubilee in the last one. Oh yeah, and yeah. jubilee means basically a reset. So I thought, what does platinum mean? So I started looking up platinum and what it's used for, and and, and et cetera, et cetera. And then you start going around rubber, another rabbit hole and realise that they're using actually using it in pharmaceuticals and stuff. And uh, it, it's. So all this esoteric meaning that they were doing. So anyway, all intrigues me. So, yeah. but I can follow the the Scooby Trail, so to speak. Um, on, a, on another note, from the one we did the other day, some fella put because we're on about meteorites. Some fella put the name of this meteorite, and I don't know if you got that email. I sent you, Dom. But yeah, I did. the name of that meteorite is a like a demon, Egyptian serpent. 
and it's going to circle Earth on the 2029 and stuff like that. It's just, I don't know, you know, uh, we were talking about that and then some guy mentions it and that, that excites me when we find out things like that. Yeah, yeah. we're we getting a preview of the weekend, guys. This is a preview of what's to come. Are you talking about something new here? Well, t- tomorrow um, night we're doing the first uh, live test show uh, at 8.30 on... Uh, which I don't think yours will be released by then. So it was on Tuesday um, at yeah. 8.30, um, uh, the 14th. The, uh, 14th of June. By yeah, then. so we're just uh, going to try that out. It's not necessarily going to do it every Tuesday or anything. Yeah. We're just trying it out just to make sure Chris's mic's working all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but I like doing these as well, John, because we yeah. spoke to you ages ago and we've been trying to set a new another one up for yeah. ages. Um, yeah. Life got in the just way. chatting to like-minded people is just it's a blessing that, yeah. that came along with this a year ago. Especially with Sam Maxim. We can just understand each other from other side of other other field, can't we? So yeah, we can, yeah. 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 Although you're a defective, yeah. Chris, aren't you? You don't uh, that's a cat's tail, by the way. That's not my <laughs> hair. Um, <laughs> but if you wonder if where my hair went, that's not it. It's not, ghost, yeah. it's not the ghost of my hair coming back to haunt me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm in Cambridge, Jonathan. Um, I left. Yeah. I left Yorkshire about twenty years ago. To be fair, yeah, thirty yeah. years ago. Yeah, years quite ago. a long time ago. Um, yeah, yeah. So, did. but Chris has a, a, an interesting uh, story actually, and this is not why he got into uh, what we're doing now. And it's only a number of years ago. You know, the guy we were talking about today, Chris, is it a Spanish? Was yeah. a Spanish guy? Uh, yeah. This is a very interesting story, Jonathan. I don't know uh, if you heard this, Jonathan. We mentioned it on one of his. Um, uh, mint sauces, <clears throat> yeah. but Dom threw me under the bus because he said, T- "Tell them about that guy." Where I told Dom about it previously. I'd never do that to you, Chris. He just he does it all the time. He throws me under the bus on the show, and um, that's the best he... way. <laughs> <laughs> I told him this story, <clears throat> and it was only in the middle of the nonsense that it actually dawned on me. Um, because I was working with this guy, a Spanish guy, Ivan, lovely guy, mad as a box of frogs, but really nice. I got on really well with him, um, and he was a kitchen pot where I worked. I used to socialise him a bit, and he had a very esoteric thought process. We immediately got on, and I could discuss things with him more than anyone else. Anyway, one day I'm just in the um, uh, I'm in the dry store, just stacking tins as you do, and uh, he came up to me and he goes, uh, "Christian, can I speak to you about something?" And I remember because I was crouched down, and it was very strange that he crouched down next to me. And he told me that he used to be a voices. He, he confided in me this that he used to he, he heard voices. Anyway, I'm crouched down in the dry store, and he said to me. Um, he didn't know what, what it, anyway, I'll explain how he said it to me. He said, something's going to happen, right? And he said... What year was this, Chris? Um, well, I left there 2019, so probably about 2016, 17, I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, could have been before. Could, well, I, I, was at, I was at that pub I was at, right, from 2013 to 2019, and he'd left two or three years. So, yeah, 2015 to 2017. I, would, I guess, 2016, sorry. And he said, um, the something's going to happen um, and, and and you're going to be part of it and people are going to listen to you. And I hate to say the word follow, but he said in a way, but something's going to happen, you're going to be involved in it somehow and people are going to listen to you. He didn't mention Dom at this point, but he didn't actually, he didn't really know what he was saying, if you know what I mean. Mm. And he said these voices had told him um, a couple of weeks before and then they told him it was, it was time to tell me and he'd, I think he'd argued it. And they said, don't worry, I'll understand. I didn't understand. <laughs> yeah. You do now. Yeah. But I think because he knew I wasn't a guy who judged people in that way, I just um, had a conversation with him. I said, well, what do you mean? And after that, we talked about it quite a lot. But he said he'd got nothing else given to him. Yeah. Um, but he said he, he was adamant it was going to happen. Adamant. Yeah. I don't Amazing. think he knew what it was himself. He just yeah. knew something was going to happen. And we all had that feeling. I don't know if you did. A lot of people... Me and him did, and it was almost like we thought something was going to happen that year. It was getting that close. It was very strange. Um, and like Don did, we all, all there's groups of, lots of us knew something was coming, didn't we? And we didn't know what it was. Yeah. Um, so, and he obviously what, had some uh, insight more, more so than us, I don't know. And he probably didn't know what it was either. He didn't know. No, he didn't know. He told me he didn't know. I was going to say, guys, on that basis, uh, myself and Anne were putting together a, a book, well, that's the intention, um, of a lot of the experiences we've had and a lot of the channelings we've had, well, I've had and, you know, various other things. And I've been looking back over the years 
and the very first thing that I was given, I probably mentioned this on your on your uh, you know on the on the sheep farm, you know, uh, when you had uh, had me on yours. Um, I read that one that you put on your um, email the other day, Jonathan. Yeah, there was the uh, two thousand and nine. Yeah. When yeah, a guy read it, came yeah. through and said um, that you, you're about to experience the, what they call the great freedom of mankind. Yeah. Yeah. That was 2009. Yeah. And looking the, back, yeah. and you mentioned 2016, 2015, 2016, Chris, mm. was some of the stuff I wrote back then. It was like mind blowing. It's like all yeah. coming through channeled. And we've, all, we've had this feeling for many years that something's going to happen and something's going to happen. And I got to a point, and I say it many times to people, I got to a point where I thought, oh, yeah, 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 you know, what a load of cobblers, you know what I mean? And um, am I, you know, the typical I'm hearing voices, psycho type of person? And then, of course, 2020 springs up, doesn't it? And like you said, Chris, it's kind of you, you, you have this... Dom was pushing you. Dom's obviously a little bit more psychic than what you probably think you are, Dom. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Psychotic. Yeah. <laughs> Dom was pushing you, pushing you to kind of get into the sheep farm and stuff. And then you were there going, yeah, well, it's work and all that. And I was, I'm also a believer that everything always happens at the right time, by well, the well, way. Well, I'd everything come up with right sheep farm in 20, around 2016. Yeah. Mm. I'd drawn pictures for it and everything. Yeah. We'd already started on it. I think my thing was I don't really like talking in public, so I'm not really yeah. a natural public talker. We so it made me really that. nervous. No, we don't believe well, that. I, don't I like know. talking. I can talk a lot, but it it, <laughs> it made me nervous doing it on a platform, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I was putting it off out of that reason, I think, more than yeah. anything. I just didn't yeah, so you're, you're, <laughs> you're in your comfort zone behind a mic and doing doing it this way, Chris, yeah? Yeah, I mean, no, this was out of my comfort zone. I didn't want to do it, did I, Dom? I so, kept putting excuses not to do it. Well, the first one we did, I told him we were just having a practice run and I recorded it and put it out. <laughs> <laughs> and when we were doing it, I kept losing my voice. I was sweating. I was so stressed, even though we were doing a practice run. Then he went and released it. Nice one. Well, you know, it's like when you're a kid and you, you know you're going to have to get jumping at the deep end when you learn to swim, don't you, at some point, mm. you know? And that's exactly it, and that's why they've called it that, isn't it? Anyway, guys, just um because uh, we're always on a time limit, aren't we, with these things? Which is which is sad really, because it's like, so what? Let's just see how we get on. Don't have to be the last one, Jonathan. But no, no. But it's like the idea is behind these uh speakeasies is finding out what people's awakening moments were, what people's light bulb moment was, yeah. So I don't know who wants to go first on that one, guys, but I'll just throw that out to you. No, uh, I'll try and answer that. Um, I can't really remember one, being honest. Mm. Um, I can remember p sort of pivotal moments, maybe, but I can always sense that when I were a kid, there was something not quite right mm. uh, from the st stuff that was on the news or um, things that were... Um, like my dad used to say when he used to go on about politics. My dad was a conservative. My granddad was a trade union uh, leader at mm. David Brown's Tractors. Right. So yeah, Christmases were great fun listening to I'm them too. Sure. <laughs> my dad didn't drink. My dad didn't drink alcohol. My granddad got pissed. Um, <laughs> so yeah, and he was a quiet guy with my granddad until he had a few jars, and then it, it all hell broke loose at Christmas. And. Uh, um, so it were interesting, me and Christian just sat back listening to these two argue, toss uh, about politics. And, and so I always thought, even from a young age, I, re I remember once being in uh, a history lesson and I'm talking about the British Empire. Um, and I, one of the, I said to one of the teachers, yeah, but I tell us how fantastic the British Empire was. And I said, but didn't the British Empire start sl the slave trade? And he went, shut Watson, get on with your work. And it's moments like that that you realise there's something not quite right mm. with the narrative that we've been told. Yeah. And that set me on a track then to probably come full circle on mm. some of the information uh, over a period of time. And like Chris said, I got into JFK. I don't know how, I just did. And whatever the real happenings happened on there, I got into that there was some sort of lie going on. I wasn't really interested in JFK, but yeah. I got interested in mm. the, the, what, what is the real truth. The backstory. And Search. How, how old would you be yeah. then, Dom, do you think, when all this was going on in your life? Um, 
but I'm probably uh, mid mid to early to mid teens. Okay. Uh, yeah. But I can't call it an awakening because it weren't like yeah. a wet fish moment like some people have. Yeah. But one of the major pivotal moments, which was probably the same for a lot of people, um, well, one was uh, several actually, the Princess Diana and a couple of stuff before it as well, yeah. uh, like Gulf War and things. I used to buy books about the Gulf War in 1990 um, and things like that. But, uh, but 9-11 was the moment where if there was a wet fish moment, it was, well, mm this is quite obvious that people are going to see that this is just nonsense. Yeah, yeah. And obviously all my mates then used to call call me uh, uh, David Icke. Yeah. Just like David Icke, you, yeah. you know, talking nonsense. Yeah. Uh, I wonder what they say now about that. Uh, well, some of them have jumped over the fence now um, yeah. uh, uh, and realised that what I was saying, there was some something to it. But you know what it's like, Jonathan, when you start realizing something's not quite right you don't really know how to explain yourself yeah uh so you, you, and, and so you are babbling a little bit and you're talking and it does probably does sound like insanity to some people yeah but when you get your sort of elevator pitch off if you like mm. you, you you can't you don't that's why i like the the research because people can't argue with it mm. They can ignore it, but they can't argue with it. They're just not interested. <laughs> they just yeah. say, I'm not, what, what can I do about it? What's it got to do with me? Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So See, that's one big disadvantage for me, because I always say to people, what I say, I can't prove it. You know, it's like, what, what comes out of my mouth? Yeah. It's like, it's experience. That's all it is. It's just pure experience. Yeah. And I can't say to you, well, go to this book, go to that book. I can, I can show you people that have had similar experiences, yeah. you know, uh, to say that, well, I'm not on my own. You know what I mean? Uh, we, we're a collective um, psychopathic uh, cult. Uh, <laughs> well, my first email to you, Jonathan, and I was telling you I was having these synchronicities. Yeah. And they were happening yeah. on a rapid, on a very rapid. I've always had them, but they were speeding up, somewhat chronic. I yeah. remember feeling quite relieved I could ask you about it. Mm. And I was talk to Dom about it, but there's no proof there because it's just yeah. mundane nonsense. There's nothing exciting or particularly yeah. groundbreaking. Yeah. But is, is it sent just to prove something to you or just yeah. so you, you know, I it's don't little, know. You get, what happens, uh, Chris, is you get little reminders of where you came from, what you are and who you are every now and again. And you're not always conscious of that, that yeah. that's what's happening, you know. Um, but life chucks things at you and uh, it's like, yeah, you, you know, it's like it's saying to you, you came here for a reason, mate, and we're just going to keep reminding you every now and again. Mm. That there's more to life than what you're seeing in front of your nose, you know. Yeah, just, just to finish, just to finish off what I was saying. Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry. Before yeah. I forget, um, I remember being it was 1984 and it was December, and I remember because I can remember dates vividly for some weird reason. Mm. But this is quite a standout one anyway now. And I was going to school on the bus, and I was telling a mate of mine about this. But I suppose it was a nightmare I had where there were a load of brown people dying, and it looked like there were. Uh, don't know, there was some sort of, just collapsing in streets and that. And uh, when I got home, uh, it was the day after Bhopal uh, in India. Right. And I had a vivid, that was probably one of my only, Chris has a lot of dreams, which he's probably going to talk about at some point, but yeah. um, it's one of my only few vivid uh, dreams is that. Yeah. Uh, and so maybe I shut something off then, but uh, as in, so I didn't want to have any more of those dreams. Yeah, yeah. And that's what a lot of yeah. people do. They do shut it off because it's, uh, number one, it kind of scares them a bit. You mm. know, and number two, you know, you start blabbing about stuff like that to your mates and, and they'll shut you down anyway. You know, Yeah, they will. Yeah. I was always quite an open book, though. I don't really care what people uh, say back. I'll, I'll talk and if they don't like it, it's tough. So I'm, I've never really been conscious about being worried about that. No, but it's strange no. that around that time in 1984 was around the time that Chris had his experience in... Outlane, with Actually, I, wrote, that, I wrote that down when you said, Yeah, um, that craft you know, coming over top thinking, of him, oh, which yeah. be quite a good explanation on here because yeah. it fits in. Because maybe that was part of the same uh thing because it was in December uh, that I had that dream and it, he was sledging. So, it asked around Uddersfield at that time, we got a lot of snow in December, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, 
Yeah, and um, well, we'll hopefully talk a bit more about that. But when you said you had an experience in Outlane, that's got to be a thing in itself, hasn't it? An experience in Outlane? <laughs> <laughs> Not involving a sheep. <laughs> is, there, is there any more experiences in Outlane going on right now? I don't know. No, I don't think so. Mate. <laughs> no. No. But um, no, thanks for that, Dom. Um, it's nice to know that you've not you've not had that kind of defining moment. Uh, it's nice to know that people are having different experiences, what I'm trying to say. Um, and some have had very abrupt awakenings. And you see, what a lot of people don't see in the normal lives is what I see in the work that I do. When I say this many times, and I'm always repeating myself, I've noticed on these uh, speakeasies and stuff, but hey ho, um, is that, uh, you know, um, we're all having different experiences, number one. Yeah, and um, you know what? What? However, we interpret that experience is really down to us. But um, that awakening moment, you know, it, it can come in many ways. But people, since this nonsense started, as we call it, um, the great nonsense, um, you know, well, you know, like the Great Depression of the thirties. Is this going to be the great nonsense of the twenties? Is it? <laughs> Yeah, I hope so. I hope oh, everything yeah. relates think, to it as that. I think even but, just by calling it that, we're all, we're, we're doing something. Yeah, you know, ridiculing the, the bullshit, aren't we? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, you know, yeah. Just by calling gonna, it out as it is. I was going to say that I see this all the time. People coming to me going, "Oh my god, I was normal. I was normal last year. Yeah, and now I'm having all these experiences, and it's like my whole world's changed. You know, and I see that because of the work that I do." You know, if you, and I'm not mean, mean, um, mean to sound awful, that's not my intention. But if you're a painter and decorator or whatever, and you and you're not aware of your psychic stuff, and you're doing your job, and you're doing this that, and that you're not going to be meeting people, are you? And you know, might somebody might come in and go, oh, "Do you want a cup of tea, love?" You know, yeah. and um, they're not going to go, "Oh, by the way, I had this wonderful experience," you know. And, uh, <laughs> they're, not, they're, not, they're not going to do that, are they? Whereas. Yeah. When they're sat in front of me, when I'm doing my work, they are talking about it openly and wondering what the hell, just like you, Chris, I suppose, really, mm. when you've got the synchronicities, what the hell's going on there, you know? Mm. And um, so we, we, we have these moments. Sometimes we don't recognise them. Um, sometimes as we evolve, we begin to recognise them more and more for what they are and, and know them and come to trust because that's the big thing, actually. That's uh, listening to you guys on the mint sauce and the, the person, I think you were reading the comments out, actually, Dom, it might have been yourself, um, about them picking on you as in are you genuine in all this. And you know what's happening with a lot of truthers is they're not, they're actually, they're not evolving, you know, they're just staying in one place because they are not allowing their minds to open up to a greater field of consciousness. And even realise, sadly, realise that they're actually being played by the people who they are actually they're, against. They're stuck. They're mentally yeah. stuck. Um, it's like the, the controllers are playing them, yeah? yeah, just like they're playing the other side. Mm -hmm. And um, and they don't. a lot of them don't realise that. And what I say to these people is, look, you know, break out of that. Become the observer. Don't become the participant in it all. Yeah, mm -hmm. become the observer. Oversee what's going on, but look at it in the bigger picture. And once you start to do that, you then start in breaking into what we call four D reality. I hate like new age words, but that's the best one to describe it at the moment. People, if you're talking about making a transition from three D to four D, well part of that transition to 4D, to the fourth dimensional reality or perception of reality is to become the observer and not the participant anymore, you know? Mm. And I've seen that so much in the last two years. It's just rapidly accelerated. We are the Adjustment Bureau. Yeah, yeah, the Adjustment Bureau. God, what <laughs> film was that, um, yeah. Dom? That, that were uh, with Matt Philip, Damon, weren't it? Philip K. Dick book, that is. Yeah, yeah. is it Philip yeah. K. Dick book as well? Mm. Yeah, 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 that was good. Um, so but I think I think Jonathan, going back to what you were saying there, and I think we talked about it the other day, Chris, um, that some of the truth I call people truthers. I don't really know what to call us really. They they woke or whatever it is, but yeah, some people are some people are on the fence, and some people are way over on the far 
I won't call it left or right, I don't mean politically, but they don't believe anything other than the bit that they know. Yeah. That's it, you yeah. know? Mm. And the cat the wood will not shift off there, they're stuck. And anything that's outside that narrative, anybody that's doing podcasts, they're a potential shill. Yeah. Yeah, which is fair enough, they are. But look at the information that's been given, not what, if you can't do proper research on that person, look at yeah. the information. The information good, yeah, right, move on from there. Because conspiracy extremists, then, yeah, rather than quite possibly, yeah, and yeah. and the issue is that um, everybody's got a life, you know. We've all worked at places, we've all been interlinked. When I put stuff up about the World Economic Forum, for argument's sake, I had for a minute thinking all them young global leaders are satanic weirdos yeah. that want to take over the world. Yeah, so, some of those people uh, will no doubt have realised what's going on and dropped out. Mm -hmm. Some of those people will have just moved in a different direction and not be part of it. A small section of them will be part of the plan. Yeah. That's it. Absolutely. And, and, and like and, all the secret societies, you know, the people involved in those, you know, they're just normal, regular people, you know? Yes. And they think they're doing good work, and they probably yeah. are doing good work in many respects. At ground level, probably. It's when you get to the top of the pyramid, that's when it all starts kicking off. Yes. So you yeah. guys know. And, and yeah, and the downside is the people at the bottom, they don't know that they're feeding the people at the top, do they? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, we're getting there, though, aren't we? We're definitely getting there. We're definitely kind of getting that consciousness raised. I, I feel as though we are. Well, there's two I things happened. There's two things happened. Sorry, Chris. There's two things happened that the World Economic Forum has got some massive press now mm. from, and I'll use that, that as an example, that I don't think that was as powerful this year as it normally is when it's hidden. These okay. parasites don't like the light shining on them. Like and the Bilderberg. Like the Bilderbergers, yeah. yeah. Um, people like Rishi Sunak, which, when me and Chris did that thing on Rise Above, we did a, an expose on him, telling yeah. people that his wife were, did the full meet the flockers on him, showing what his background was. Mm. And it was quite obvious that he's been placed in that position yeah. now at the behest of the, the, the global bank, bankers. Yeah, because his his father in law is a multi billionaire worth five billion dollars. Yeah, he didn't tell that when he got voted in. Anybody? He didn't, no. he, you know, he's in Times Rich list at seven hundred and fifty million now. Yeah, yeah. Are, are we being big headed? The fact to say that all that stuff came out about his wife after he did that flockers. <laughs> uh, I don't think we've been big headed. I think people have got hold of it because I know certain. Then it there's spreads a, there's around, a, doesn't it? And then well, there's a, there's a group of got to mention it then. Yeah, there's a group of uh, journalists that uh, cont contact me. And uh, they um, start spreading things around, but they do it in a different way. They do it in a traditional way then. You know, there's nothing wrong with printing a, or telling people about a story that Rishi Sunak's wife worth, is worth 750 million, because it's in times. They're not going to get sued for it. Mm, mm. You know, it's easily proved in anything. That, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're not going down the... the uh, you know, making spurious like there's a double decker bus on moon or something like that. You know, we're not doing that. It's no, they're in. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> but there's you know some what? guys. There's some guys called holding the line journalists against uh, the nonsense censorship. Yeah. And these are traditional journalists that have jumped over the fence. Yeah. Your uh, your, your words there, uh, Dom, just th uh, threw me back to a cartoon called um, the Regular Show. And uh, it was something that my eldest son used to watch. Uh, mm -hmm. There were these two characters called Rigby and Mordecai, and they had this, uh, they came across this like keyboard thing, uh, and they called it the power because when you did, when you played things on it, it started like doing magic things. And um, just as you said uh, the uh, about the moon, um, there's this kind of guy who they knew, and they did this little keyboard thing and this little almost like rap thing going on. And they said, um, you know, they were supposed to say, send him to his room, right, to get rid of him. But they said, send him to the moon. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, and that's where he went. So and the thing is, they'd sent loads of other things to the moon, you know. And all uh, these things so are on the moon. You never know. There could be anything up there. You know what I mean? It might just be a <laughs> distant going, sky for all we know. I'm going completely off yeah. uh, off on a tangent here, aren't I? Now? Yeah. But, um, no, that's brilliant. Thank you, Dom. Uh, 
Go on then, Chris. Did you have a, a defining kind of awakening moment, or again, like a bit like Dom, you kind of just eased into it, so to speak? A bit, a bit more like Dom, yeah, because I, I wrote down some things when you were asking him. Um, like you said, one of them was that that this thing I saw in the sky, wherever it was, and it wasn't the fact that I saw that; it was the fact that no one believed me, and I knew I'd seen it. Yeah. So I think that definitely left a nugget in my head. Um, growing up, I always remember thinking when they used to talk about wars on TV, I used to think, they're all grown up, why are they still fighting? I'm a kid, and even I know it's wrong, but I'll do it because I'm a kid, but I don't understand how all these adults in different countries can still be fighting with each other, it didn't never made any sense to me. Um, and I, I just wrote this down, because I remember reading in a comic of all things, I used to read comics, and I remember which one it was, it was Dark Knight Returns, and there's a whole bit in it about how Pearl Harbor was, it's, it's relative to the story, but how Pearl Harbor was possibly done by the, the Americans knew it was going to happen, and they just didn't do anything about it. And I remember looking into it a bit further and realising that was a very genuine possibility and thinking, right. oh my God. So I, I must have been at 15 then. And then yeah. I also remember reading that thing about, which is now common knowledge, but I don't think probably, about the Nazis having, um, is it IBM was going in and, and servicing the counting machine that they have. Is that right, Dom? Yeah. So they were going in from America to service the IBM early computer counting machine okay. that the Nazis had on the concentration camps. Yeah. And you know when you just start thinking, that that that, well, that doesn't make any sense. And then you bring it up with people and no one's really interested. Um nine eleven didn't really do it for me because I think I was busy. I got my first head chef job and I wasn't really paying any attention, I don't think. As much as I was gobsmacked. But then I went down the Michael Moore road of that um, stupid white men book I remember reading that. <clears throat> but it was um it was more the Iraq war with Tony Blair that got me. Um yeah. Because that was clearly nonsense. And even on a level where I hadn't really gone totally over the fence, but just saying to people, or even if it's true, right, and say these terrorists did do this, it's got nothing to do with Iraq. And also, you know, none of it made any sense, but no yeah. one cared. And they just yeah. went along with it anyway. Yeah. Um, I got called a unpatriotic and all sorts, and I just didn't understand. And then I also remember saying, well, now we're bombing in Iraq and seeing this and seeing these pictures of people picking up body parts, mm. they've got the perfect right to turn into a terrorist if such a thing exists. Yeah. And start, because um, if you did that to me, I would. <laughs> you know, if I saw my you family would. blown to pieces, you, you, you know, what, what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I just saw all these injustices and none of them made any sense. And yeah. no one cared, no one listened. That, yeah. that. So then, like, well, we're saying you just got more and more frustrated explaining these things to people. And no one, no one's really that interested. Mm. And then, yeah. And then I suppose... You know, I was already way over the fence by the time the nonsense happened, but then something changed with the nonsense, I think. Um, like you were saying about the truth is kind of thing. I think probably I maybe have been a bit guilty of that right at the beginning, but then you had to open up, didn't you? Because you had to say yeah. to yourself, and I think I said it on our podcast, what 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 are they selling us here? Fear of death. We're all going to die. So mm -hmm. you're going to walk, walk around with a face nappy on and take some stuff jarred up your ass just because you might buy yourself an extra 10 years. What What's yeah. the point in that? Yeah. And... The way they were selling it so hard didn't make any sense either. Yeah. Why? Why are they selling it so hard? You know, it's like it's like someone, some pedo trying to show you his puppies. He keeps going on about it. I've got some sweets. I've got some puppies. What? What? What else can you give me? I don't want anything off it. Leave me alone. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably went off on a tangent there. No, um, no, not at all. I, I but yeah, things really like think. that. Just little little tip bits. I didn't have a around the head moment like Dom said. Yeah. It was little tip bits throughout being from being a kid from seeing that thing in the sky mm. and realizing adults didn't have all the answers as well you know yeah. um and you just use your way of, i tell you one thing uh, Josh, i was going to tell you and this is a very strange story i don't know what your take is on this and i don't know if i've probably told you it though but when i was a kid one of my um mates died so i was probably 12 and i think about it now i knew nothing about reincarnation you're younger like than that chris was i younger was i like we were at junior 10? school no we were at junior school so i, and I was i, was, I was still at your i was still at your junior school as well so. Yeah, around the same time I saw that disc in the sky. So I'd probably been 10. Oh, were you still at junior school, Pat? Yeah. So, all right, all right. So I was t even younger than I thought, actually. So say I was 10, and my best mate got killed. It really screwed me up. It was horrible. Um, and I don't know if this is me dealing with it in a weird way, or this actually happened, but um, I was at... <clears throat> I was at, My dad was getting some horses shooed at the blacksmiths, like he did in them days. It doesn't really, doesn't really happen these days. But I was playing while he was getting his horses shooed, and there was a little fluffy dog. And it was a puppet. And I was playing with it. And I got it in my head that it was my friend and who passed away. And I was so sure of it. 
and convinced him that I was playing with this dog. Anyway, we wandered off and he came around the corner and I hid from it and he came around the corner. As it came around the corner, I went, boo! And it yelped and it ran off and I never saw it again. I remember saying to myself, that was the end of our relationship and I needed that. Whether I was doing it on a psychological level or whether it was the reincarnation of my mate, I don't know. But I thought it was the reincarnation of my friend. I was only 10. Yeah. And I, I think I might have tried to explain that to someone. And I just got like, you're insane. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you had a 10-year-old kid coming up and saying that to you. Yeah. What are you on about? Yeah. I mean, my mum was pretty open-minded with stuff like that. But um, yeah, that was a, a strange experience. Yeah. Whether you know, it was or it was just me mentally dealing with it, I don't know. Well, it could be, absolutely. Um, but we talked earlier about, you know, those moments where you get keep getting reminded, yeah? Mm. The reminders keep coming into your life to go, hang on, you know, life's a lot more this. complex than what you perhaps think it is. And mm. um, it's actually, when I say complex, that's the wrong word to use. It's actually more simple than what we, we think it is. We make it complex, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, the whole spiritual thing is all about simplicity it's the most simple thing in 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 you know well in, in everything consciousness and talking about i'm, I'm gonna quiz you on the disc thing though um chris i'm not gonna let that one go uh but um you know science is just uh beginning now to really put some explanations into all this stuff that we don't see you know and I uh, saw a fantastic documentary on uh, Netflix or something, um, and it was about um, nothingness, you know, emptiness, empty space. What the hell is empty space? And uh, let's face it, there's more empty space than anything. And mm -hmm. uh, they really started putting some amazing scientific theories into it and, and even a little bit of proof in there as well. And, and I thought, this is the kind of stuff that we talk about. This is the stuff that I can't prove to people. But yeah, scientists are beginning to look at it rationally and starting to prove it now. So, I think there could be a hijacking in place. A what? A what? Dom, sorry. A, a hijacking, because that's what they do, don't they? Yeah. They get people like like uh, cells. We're talking sense. Then they take it and they take it off on a slightly different tangent away yeah. from to take you know it, it, just to confuse everybody again. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, to stop it taking hold is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, Just tell, tell the truth a little bit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I could tell you some crazy theories about uh, Kern, about uh, Afghanistan, all kinds of stuff. You know, I could go on all night. Um, but um, I won't, because people will think <laughs> the brain. Yeah, but <laughs> that might be for another time. Uh, but Chris... Going back to your disc, so what, what actually did you see, if you don't mind me asking? Well, um, there was about five or six of us sledging down the back of the woods in Outlet, and we were, we were lying in the snow. We were sat, we'd been sledging for a few hours. It was getting dark. We were sat in the snow, and over the valley there, uh, we could see these lights whizzing around. And I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I didn't know what a UFO was at that point. I was that young. Um, ET was not long out, but I think that was after. But they were bit, they were bit, these things were buzzing around, and our cousin Shane was there. I mean, Shane was a bit of a bullshit, to be fair. Um, and he started talking about aliens, and me and the other kids didn't really know anything about it. He was a little bit older, and he was he's telling these stories. Oh, yeah, you know, so you're in, you're in the 80s when there was a, it was quite a, ha a hot spot for it, actually, in Middlesfield then. And they were whizzing around, but like moving quick. So it wasn't, it was like, that's really strange. And I, was, I remember feeling a bit uneasy about it. Anyway, he starts telling stories, and we all decided we were going to set off home. So we started walking up, up this hill to go home. Um, and just as we got, I always remember, as we were walking up there, someone turned a light on in, in the little um, village bit. And we all went, ah, jumped, scared us to death. Mm. But then we all kind of looked behind us and this disc was approaching us and it's, it's stopped above us. Mm. Um, and this is a strange bit, right? <clears throat> and I didn't really work this out until I was a, a lot older. Because um, I always said, the next thing I knew, we were all lying in the snow. And my sledge was 10 feet away from me. It slid down the slope a little bit. And then we, we all jumped up and we just ran home. No one spoke. We just ran home. Vaulted this fence. Me and my cousin ran to our house. And all the kids just like went into this estate and went on off in their own direction and went home. Mm. Um, <clears throat> we got home. Told me, I remember going in and my mum and dad were there and some friends and they all just pissed themselves laughing when we told them. Mm. But the strange thing was, 
<clears throat> excuse me, it was around it was around disc with, with just balls on it, just a light disc. Mm. Um, the next day, mate, his cousin Shane, he was drawing pictures of it with guns on and stuff. And I remember thinking it, it didn't look like that. Um, and it was almost like he'd forgotten it. Yeah. Now, when I, or he, or he couldn't draw it. Got, yeah. Or he, or he was just a crap drawer. Or he was just a bullshit. He was lying yeah. about it. But he, I don't know, it's that to creep in that he didn't know about it. Or he'd forgotten it or something. I yeah. don't know. But my mum always remembered me running in and, and was being hysterical shouting about it. Mm. Um, and that was it, really. Yeah. But I was always a bit of an odd kid anyway. Um, no, you, yeah. you, the thing is, you think you're odd, but you weren't actually that odd, Chris. No, I was You might yeah, think well, you were odd. Well, my dad told me I was. He used to introduce yeah. me as fucking weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, if I was telling you that weirdo, for being but, uh, a, little, a little kid, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. sinks, sinks in a little You were just into superheroes and I went into football. I don't, I don't yeah. think you were oh, odd about that. But I think yeah. I look at that part there, what Chris is just saying, yeah. as part of whatever. <clears throat> it is strange that two brothers think like I mean if me and him shared an house for a month we'd be killing each other mm. fact yeah because yeah. yeah. we, we wouldn't get on in that close proximity would we yeah. Chris you know no, I don't yeah with anyone yeah yeah, yeah no yeah no. <laughs> even if, if, this is close enough Cambridge and Huddersfield uh, this, long, this long distance relationship's working well for you obviously yeah, <laughs> yeah look we get, we get on right but it's more <laughs> it, we are like chalk and cheese but the energetic side for some reason whatever that experience is I'm convinced now had something to do with why we are how we are. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, I, I know Dom was saying about that experience in the 80s, but I've always had, and I don't want to sound, but I've always had these dreams that come true. Um, I, I could write a book on them, honestly. They, mm. And they're all crap, to be fair. It's not like anything dynamics happened. Mm. It's always just, like you said, John, just information that means nothing. Um, yes. I've got, I'll give you an example. I've got this friend, right? And I used to knock around with him when I was a kid. And we sporadically speak to each other. Like, can go five years, ten years. I've not even seen him for about five years. And if I think about him, or I, dream, I have a dream about him, I know somehow um, he'll be in touch. Mm. And I've told him this, and he just thinks I'm nuts. But it's, and I don't have any, we don't, we're not in each other's lives, but it's just bizarre. We maybe made a connection when we were kids, and that's why. <laughs> or maybe, I don't know, I don't know what happened. But it, it happened the other week, to be honest. I've not spoken to him for five years, maybe longer. Um, I, I had a dream about him. I told my missus. I always tell my missus and I tell Dom because I think if something happens. And anyway, and I didn't even think about it till after it happened. A week later, he says, "What are you doing?" He, he, he emailed me and says, "Oh, I'm coming down to Cambridge on business. Can I come and see you?" And I was working, so I couldn't. And I didn't think about it again. And it was about a week later. I went, "Oh, oh for fuck's sake! It happened again, didn't it?" Um, it, we were in Spain once, and he contacted me out of the blue, and I'd had a, I'd had a dream about it. I told my missus. I said, you know that guy I always say I have his dreams about and he turns up. I said, he can't turn up here, we're in Spain. Ten seconds after I said it, her sister shouted up, who's, I will not say his name, who's blah, blah, blah. And my missus went, oh my God. And it was because he'd seen the picture of me on Facebook and he'd put a message on it. So his point is, his, her sister ended up shouting his name in the house ten minutes after me <clears> mentioning <throat> it. And I, I had not seen him for maybe five, ten years or something. Uh, it's just little bits like that that mean nothing, but Mm. I don't know. I mean, nothing but everything, if you could say that. Yeah. Uh, do you know what I mean? It's like piecing a jigsaw together. Yourself, you? you have explained that well. Yeah, mm. yeah, piecing a jigsaw together. While you were talking there, uh, Chris, it was the time was 2020 on my computer, so there you go. Do, 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 do. <laughs> 2020 vision. <laughs> uh, but no, that's fascinating. Um, have you ever read Chameleon by Whitley Strieber? Yeah, I saw him speak live as well. Did you? Because yes, he, he did. weirdly, actually, I got obsessed with aliens at one point around yeah. X Files time because I make sculptures, and I started making alien sculptures uh, mm. just before yeah. X Files kicked off. So I did really well out of them, yeah. and I went to um, an, a UFO convention in um, I think it was that way where I saw. Him. I think it was in Sheffield, and I think he was talking there, and I saw him there. Uh, um, but yeah, I got a bit have, alien obsessed when I was a kid. Have you looked into the classic abduction scenarios? I'm sure you have. By what? What you're talking mm. about? Yeah, it's what you're yeah, talking about. Both there. Like you get classic abduction yeah. scenario stuff. Yeah. Well, I got to 15, and I told this story to everyone. Everyone just said I was nuts. Got to a point yeah. where I didn't care if anyone believed me or not. I just said it anyway, just to see the look on the face. But it was, it was like reading a, of all things. I think it was a News of the World magazine, one of those mm. tra- crappy magazines my dad used to get. And there was a story in there about this man, and this this couple, a daughter and a mum, and they'd seen a thing around the back of their house, and they'd lost some time. And that's when it 
clicked in my head. I think it was about 15 then. Clicked in my head, but bloody hell, that's very similar to what we saw and what happened. Yeah. And I remember, I always thought that we saw it fell over because we were so amazed. Mm. But that didn't make sense to me, really, as I got older. Mm. Um, but yeah, and I did read Communion, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I think the whole times, right? UFO thing. I mean, the, the recent, uh, recently it's changed, hasn't it? Where people say, "Oh, it's nonsense" and, and all this. I, I can't say that the entire ufology thing is nonsense. You can't say that. Mm. There's two. I mean, Chris, is there no reason to. I mean, other people might think he's just making it up, but there's no reason to make it up. You no. know. Um, make that up and it's pretty vivid because he's told me about it for years and it's never changed you know he's not adding bits to it he didn't say he's seen an alien or anything like that he just saw a craft mm. is it really out of the ordinary that the government or other no. uh, entities could be flying around that we don't really see unless they want us to see them uh, yeah. whether we are got <clears throat> space or whether we're on some kind of flat thing who really cares what shape it is Yeah, we know we're being lied to so the same people are telling. But now the, the the news is feeding us back with like a double conspiracy where now they're saying it is true, whereas for years they've been saying it isn't. Yeah. So the, the people that were looking into it now are saying, well, it must be a lie then. And so <laughs> yeah, it's, true. Yeah, it's, it's sort of, <laughs> the, the, and this Fair is enough. what happens. And they the lose what the real essence of all this is, which is yeah. the normal people and the professionals that have seen things yeah. that are then there's no need to make them up. They're not no. to get, forget the military people or anything. Average people are saying, "I've seen that," like Chris, mm. and something's happened. Yeah. You know, they haven't been brainwashed. They haven't been. You know, they don't work for CIA or anything. There's another yeah. side to it where there is definitely some form of agenda going on there, isn't there, with the yeah. TV and films and whatever. Yeah. Oh, there's definitely a, there's definitely an agenda. Anyway, yes. Yeah. That doesn't mean said there's little green men. No, yeah. but they've been no. selling us. You know what my instinct tells me? They tell us to look up and they could be up there and whatever. But maybe they're down there. I don't know. I mean, Absolutely. Or, or, or over there. there. Or over there, yeah. or under the water, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, a um, couple of theories on all that stuff, guys, is because you're taking me down another rabbit hole now, aren't you? It must be good. You're good at that, aren't you? Taking people down rabbit holes. <laughs> um, but I know two down. people who yeah. had what I call TR3B experiences. That's the triangular, triangular yeah. UFO. And right. one of them uh, was convinced it was uh, human. Yeah, nothing to do with extraterrestrials. He could actually see people inside it. He said it was huge. Right. And it hovered over him, and he said, I could actually see people. So I could see stairways and all sorts inside it through the window. Oh, yeah. and, and a guy who, and we, we actually put them in touch with each other, and we feel or we think that they had the same experience, but in different locations, yeah, um, on the same night, on the same evening. Right. Um, so. Uh, well, that was the same for the chap in Tomberdon, wasn't it? The, the policeman. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He um, had the same experience of a, another lad in Halifax, another yeah. policeman in Halifax, I think. That's it. Yeah. And Wakey, he had somebody else had one in Wakefield yeah. at the same time. So. Well, if you look at, um, uh, I'm glad you, you're leading me on to something that I wanted to talk about, actually. So you're really two psychic guys, right? You know where we're going. <laughs> yeah. Um, is the magic of Huddersfield. I'm not just saying that because we live here or we come from there. But um, Scammerdon. Outlane, Paul Moore, all UFO hotspots, by the way. Yeah. Mm. Um, Emily Moore, site, uh, scene of a um, UFO sighting. So these masts that we've got all around us, and by the way, you know we've got two over our neck of the woods now, so Emily Moore's now the number 11, by the way, just yeah. interestingly. Oh, yeah. With the two masts. The it's twin towers, one. yeah. It's the number 11, the twin towers, yeah. Um, and I'm becoming more convinced as time goes on that there's something very special about the energy of Huddersfield. Um, and I, I've chats with a lady who um, uh, lives in Huddersfield. She's very clued up, very scientific, uh, but spiritually scientific, if you understand what I'm saying. By the way, um, I've just done a spiritual speakeasy with a lady called Mary Rodwell. Uh, Mary's called the alien lady, yeah, and she deals with kids who have gone through the whole scenarios, 
hybridization, uh, abductions, the new kids that have been born on the planet, um, you know, with these amazing gifts. And she's setting up a school for these kids now, you know, taking them out of mainstream education and stuff. So you might want to watch out for that one when I put it on the speakeasy. Uh, lovely lady. Um, she's hopefully coming over. She lives in Australia. She's British by birth, but lives in Australia now. And hopefully she's coming over next uh, year to Manchester, all being well. Around the nonsense that's kind of not, you know, putting mm. in any more restrictions. So... I just want to throw that out to you guys to to think about this land and the land that we're living on, and it's a massive energy. And I don't think it's any late, coincidence yeah. that um, Castle Hill looks like Glastonbury Tor, yeah, mm. a little bit. Uh, there's a resemblance there, and um, I have a I have a map of ley lines in the Huddersfield area, what we call ley lines, energy lines. And it's fascinating. And most of them converge on uh, Castle Hill, by the way. Right. So there's something very magical about this place. It's like, you know, um, why are there so many people who are kind of getting out there that live in Huddersfield? Uh, Gary Heseltine, he's a UFO guy. He, he lives over in the home first. There's you guys, obviously, Chris, you're now in Cambridge. Um, you know, there's me with the spiritual slant on things. Yeah, there's um, Matt, Matt Bajerski. He lives in yeah. Spain now, but he's from Huddersfield. Yeah. yeah. It, what, what, what is it about this? John place? Hammer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. John, yeah. Well, it's, stra it's, it's strange, you know, because somebody put a comment on saying um, about the, the... It was the same person that put the, that comment we were talking on about... There's a lot of people in Huddersfield seem to have woken up. Is there some kind of secret cult? <laughs> I think she said, she or he said Masons and Rotary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, right, okay. yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's what it is, Jonathan. We're all being... Well, also, Jonathan, if, if, if there was some kind of spiritual thing in Huddersfield, we wouldn't know because they wouldn't tell us, would they? Let's not focus on Glastonbury or focus on somewhere else. Absolutely. Not, no one's going to say... All the energy in ley lines aimed to West Yorkshire, aren't they? No. Well, uh, there is in Todmorden, isn't there? Because Todmorden is one of those areas. Is it? Because yeah. that was where the, the the sort of UFO triangle in Huddersfield, uh, Todmorden was. So where you were on that slope sledging, mm. that was a direct line over the top right. to Halifax to Todd. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, you those know, definitely um, were over the Halifax direction. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know Studley Pike at Todmorden? Yeah, well, I, I I know it. Yeah, yeah. The big obelisk. Yeah. On top of the hill. Yeah. You want to go there? You really do want to go there. Um, many years ago, my guide said, "Oh, you got to do some ley line repair, and you've got to go to Studley Pike in Todmorden." Right. And I got a clue what what all that was about, and so we went. And as I was climbing up, it's huge, by the way, is this obelisk. You can actually stand. There's a big observation platform on it. Yeah. Uh, but as you go into the, you can actually go into the door. As you go into the door, it's, it becomes pitch black. You can't see anything. But you know there's some steps there. You have to kind of almost feel your way around the steps. And then eventually you see the light onto the observation gantry. And you can, fantastic view, by the way. Um, and I didn't realise until I, 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 uh, I looked into it. But when I got there, first off, there was the dividers. You know, the, the Masonic dividers uh, set in stone above the, on the door lintel. And I thought, ah, that's why. Shouldn't surprise us anymore, shouldn't it? And um, <laughs> so what they tend to do is they tend to um, uh, re revert, it. not revert. I can't, sometimes I wish I was a thesaurus, but I'm not. I'm a dinosaurus, but I'm not a thesaurus. Uh, but um, it's like they change the meaning of things, don't they? The, the our uh, Inverted. A cult yeah. control is like to invert. Thank you, Dom. You've got the word. Thank you. <laughs> invert reality and invert the truth. Yeah. So when I was looking at looking up about Studley Pike, it was built by a Freemason, and it's designed that when you were going through that door up to the gantry, it's the initiation ceremony ceremony of yeah. Freemasonry. You're going from the darkness to the light. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, again, I could tell you loads of stories about how these places are all connected and where they're connected to. Um, but uh, I just thought I'd throw that one in. So they're but, hijacking the energy with that ley line, yeah. basically. 
And I also have a, I also have a theory about this. Uh, people talk about Atlantis, yeah. And I'm and there's only oh, one other person that agrees with me on this so far. But I've got a very strong impression that the British Isles are part of Atlantis, because these islands have created so much in the, in the history. Um, not yeah. only that, but you know, like the city of London, the actual city mm. of London, where the Queen has to kind of get permission to to go in. Um, that that is the actual energy seat of power. That's the seat of power that came from Atlantis. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know if you've heard of a guy called God God Godvalmast. Uh, the guys that rise above call him Godvast. Uh, Godvaj, don't they, uh, Chris? Mm. And he talks about the Ben Ben Stone right. and the Ben Ben Stone being in the Houses of Parliament, and there's the two towers, Big Ben and the Parliament, yeah. basically being where all the uh, energy is is sourced from. Yeah. And that that was part of the Holy Grail, or part of that old story. And so, because it shifted from Jerusalem to London, because there's been some sort of shift. Yes. And so that's what the, the whole Crusades possibly were about. Okay, interesting. Moving the there's artifacts across to here. There's something very strange about the British Isles, though, like you said, Jonathan, because uh, um, it's had so much clout for so many years. Something, yeah, it doesn't make I sense. Mean, there is it? even the theory that, I mean, Jesus, it was all all back to front, and Jesus was wandering around Ireland. There's all that. There's oh, all absolutely, that stuff, yeah, right? yeah. Well, according I mean, to... Being news to what, say, how do we know? They've lied about everything. Up, again, can't, can't speak truth to you, Chris, but what we pick up is that Jesus came here to the mystery schools that were set up here by the Druids, and the mm. Druids were the ancient race that came from Atlantis, yeah? Mm. And uh, why are there so many stone circles in these islands? It's just incredible. Mm. You know, the I mean, energy you... coming off these places is quite incredible. So, of course, if anybody wants to invert reality and invert the truth, what do they do? They cite the seat of power, which is the city of London, on one of the most powerful nodes in, on the planet, mm. you know? Well, there's several nodes out there, you'd think. Uh, London, city of London... Switzerland, for some reason, yeah. Washington, D.C., yeah. um, you know, they're the three that stand out, and Rome. Yeah. Paris they're the ones that well. stand out. Yeah, they get a lot of yeah. attention, don't they, for whatever. They get a lot of attention. And so yeah. does the Middle East as well. But yes. those, as a small... I mean, why is the Vatican the Vatican? It's a country within a country yeah. that has its yeah. own laws and everything. Well, Switzerland had all the money, yet yeah, Hitler didn't bother invading it, even though it would have walk over because it hadn't got an army. Yeah, uh, walked over everything else, but didn't bother with Switzerland. Yeah. Uh, push over with all the banks wouldn't make sense. And England, with this dot on a map somewhere, or Britain, mm. and we we probably still control all the fine as a banking fraternity control all the finances and laws around yeah. the world. Yeah, absolutely. So it all it's all it's like, like we said, isn't it? That putting the little pieces of the jigsaw together all the time. You know, well, you know, a lot of a lot, a lot of obsession with obelisks as well. Yeah, obelisks, yeah. A lot of the people in power always come back to Britain. Yeah. Trudeau, you yeah. know, all, all these people are all linked to, in some way, shape or form yeah. back to Britain. i got quite a few people coming from different countries who were awakening and they're all right. being drawn to the UK. Right. Yeah. So there's something here in these islands that's quite magical and special. I don't know entirely what that is all about just yet, but... I'll I'll try and get to know more on it as time goes on, but uh, it's one of those things that I can't prove. But when you sit and think about it, um, it starts to perhaps make a little bit more sense. And there's something about Huddersfield as a place itself. Uh, it's a very, uh, it's a I don't know. I'm not saying it just because I come from Huddersfield, because I mean, quite frankly, the town uh, is is. God, it's awful, god awful. It's awful now, isn't it? Yeah. Compared to what it used to be. I mean, it used to be a thriving place, you know? Yeah, bustling, right? Um, yeah. But, um, you know, anyway, uh, without going on too much, because I know we, we're, we're, we're kind of down to time, guys. Um, so um, I just wanted to ask you if there's anything you want to say just to sign off, really, anything that you want to... To let people know, or anything you feel as though it might be relevant for them. Well, f firstly, all of this seems like we've been doing this about ten minutes. How long have we been an hour? Because well, me and Chris normally record. To your, compared to your podcast, it is yeah. ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be honest, they just fly by though, Jonathan. They just, just yeah, fly by. Yeah. I feel. Yeah. I, do you know? 
just to, I feel, I mean, as much as it stressed me out when we first started doing it, I feel quite blessed that we've got the chance to do it. Because, I mean, it's just me and him wanging on like we do anyway. And yeah. it's uh, great that, uh, it's great that it, it that people say it's helped them through the nonsense. That's the best thing, I think. I think literally the best thing. That's yeah. amazing. Because we listen to people who help us through the nonsense, you know. Yeah. And yeah. You you know, some people have got no like minded people around them, no family or friends or anything, and they're on their own. And they've stuck to the guns as well. Well, I, I remember when the arms I remember when I were ill going through it and uh that around two thousand nine and I started watching Richard Diol. And Richard Diol did the same for me that apparently me and Chris are helping other people. But that the intention wasn't there to do it for that reason. We were just annoyed and wanted to put our thing out. Uh, it was like a frustration, wasn't it? We just wanted yeah, to, uh, certainly not. I on to my missus and she just used to say, you, you know, you, you think you know all this stuff, I just do something about it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Do, do something about it instead of wagging on to me about it. In other words, don't talk to me about it. <laughs> yeah, don't when I said me and Dom were going to do it, to be fair to her, I mean, she's very supportive of what we do. When I said we were going to do it, she said it's perfect because you two, your brothers, and you, you talk honestly, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. And we, yeah. we're venting, it was more of a vent, wasn't it, Pat? I think, mm. to get yeah. these things off his chest more than anything. We look at Mark Devlin, you know, and, and some of Mark's rant, you know what I mean? And it's mm. like, um, but it was actually speaking, and this is the same with you guys, is there were two things I would always tune into uh, uh, in the early part of the nonsense, and that was Mark Devlin and you guys, yeah? And um, oh, and it was like, because you you speak honestly. You, you're speaking honestly, you know? You're not holding it back. You, you, you're saying as it, it's like catchphrase, isn't it? Say what you see, you know? Good old yeah, Roy Walker. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, you, you you're relating it in ways that people connect with and that's that's the beauty of it that's the difference really and um and we've all got to talk we've all got to do this and and chris and dom you guys you you got together and and you did it you converted that into something that to me is the inspiring thing about what you do is that you you did it you just did it you, you didn't have a kind of plan or there was nothing there it just happened and it was organic and but you felt compelled to have to do that and um mm -hmm. and then of course like you said the magic year came along and it all started to make more sense and and of course so many people are in that place aren't they as you said dom about um or chris uh about isolation you know that's been a real killer as isolation mm -hmm. hasn't it not the intention. Uh, that, that's another Masonic um, part of the right, the isolation part. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, one thing, uh, Jonathan, is we always agreed, didn't we, Don? Whatever we do, when we start doing it, we're just going to let it organically happen. We weren't going to push anything or try anything yeah. too hard. Yeah. Just and that's difficult on. for me. It's easy for him <laughs> because <laughs> I'm uh, somebody who has to keep, I'm a bit relentless. I've got a re relentless part. Part of me, which is good. What I mean is, the and also it doesn't do many favors at times as well. Mm. The mm. style of it and what we did, we kind of just said we'll just organically, you know, um, see what comes our way, kind of thing, won't it? Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. And it always does. And um, you know, just going back to the old spiritual stuff and the stuff that I can't prove is that a guy said to me at the beginning of twenty twenty um, that um, it's kind of more or less. We aren't going to be coming down in spaceships and landing on the White House lawn. Kind of forget all that. We're speaking through you telepathically. We don't need to come down in spaceships. Yeah. Mm. Every human being is a channel for, to, to be able to, re, to receive and transmit information. And, um, and that's why so many people in the world just suddenly woke up, sparked up, set the machine going and started talking about things, starting talking about their experiences. Um, and and even if we don't think or we don't have that need to think that we're connecting with anything else, it's not a problem. It's the fact that everybody's speaking about it and talking and 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 having that uh, connection, isn't it? That that oneness connection thing, knowing that you know there's somebody around the other side of the world that thinks exactly the same as what you do. Um, and you guys have really brought these people together. I'm so pleased though that we didn't wake up in 2020 are you uh, <laughs> it must have been terrible that yeah uh, because the download of information i've said this a few times but from 2020 to today is like 
is, is more than the download I had in the previous 20, 25 years. Mm. Yeah. And to have that, also... to have that not know what you're having must have been absolutely f- terrifying. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, to, yeah, because yeah, can't, you can't imagine, can you? Because to, to us, all it did was confirm everything we ever talked about. Yeah. 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 In fact, didn't we confirmed. It out. Yeah. <laughs> we confirmed out. Yeah. 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 And I would say this as well, guys, that, you know, we're not actually discovering anything. We're remembering it. We're remembering what we already know. But yeah. when we came here, we had our memories wiped. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's like you clean slate. You've got you to gotta find it all again in your own way type of thing. Um, also. A good song, uh, Howard Jones, um, Howard Jones uh, song, um, here we go again. This is the uh, brain kicking in. Hide and seek, Howard Jones. I refer to that song quite a lot. The lyrics in that song are amazing. Yeah, from the eighties. Um, right, and, and um and it's all about rediscovering, uh sorry, not discovering, but knowing really um what we already know, what what's already there, yeah, that we have to go and find it again. Um so um whoever whoever the the, the you know, the, the helpers who are trying to help us from the, the they, or wherever they, they, Jonathan. Yeah. yeah. They must be very frustrated with us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, they're rolling their eyes all the time, you know what I mean? It's like, what do they do no, with No, it? I have this thing, Jonathan, and I don't know if I've just invented it in my head, right? And I see this group of people laughing at me when I do something silly or when I say something stupid or even funny, and they're actually pissing it's themselves. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's just like a helping mechanism, but... Yeah. It's like a seat, and I'm like, ah, stop laughing at me, no beds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But like a, fil- a familiarization as well, a familiar laugh at me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe I'm nuts. Well, one, one other thing I, th- I'd, before, we, before we have to leave, uh, the 2020, it weren't all negative um, no. for people no. who, of this mindset. Um, there, there were several things that happened. One, we got to know people like you, Jonathan, you know, people who we'd never met before that were, like you said, on his own doorstep. Mm. Uh, you know, we, we met Mark Devlin. We met um, several other, John Amer, you know, several other people mm. we've been in touch with. Not just people who are doing what we do now with podcasts and things like that, mm. but also the people that either tune in or listen to certain things, like, like the people on Rise Above who go in the chat there, all these people who are like-minded and a lot of them have, just as much knowledge event as any as me or Chris or anybody who who, who is doing podcasts really. The, some of them got fantastic knowledge. The email us with loads of information. I'm just sorry I can't use it all, mm. but we wouldn't have connected with any of them. And what it's done for me is I don't have to talk to morons anymore. Mm. Yeah, I'd already cut myself away from. I mean, a bit more than Chris does, but cut myself away from having to go around in circles with yeah. with people. I just couldn't handle it. And that, that started for me in around about 2004, five. Mm. I started pulling myself away from people I didn't, I didn't, I, I just couldn't cope with. It was just yeah. cul-de-sac uh, mm. brains. Couldn't yeah. handle it. Yeah. And that, that's definitely what's been happening, isn't it? That we find in our tribes, you know, um, and you find it very difficult to, well, you can't go back to that frequency. You can't go back to that vibration. No. It's just like magnets opposing each other. It's impossible, you know. Yeah. Um, and and it's very painful for a lot of people. And like you you said, Dom, um, to actually wake up in 2020, well, people are doing that. People are actually having really abrupt awakenings. Yes. You know. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it's like, oh my God, can you imagine what what all that's about? I quit to no Star Wars where they come out of light speed and stop like that and go, <laughs> where, where the fuck are we? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe that, maybe that's the point of all of those. Maybe his point is is to ease these people through this nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you in your way, Jonathan, me and Dom in our way, everyone else in their way. Maybe that's the whole point of it. I don't know. The adjustment bureau hmm. on that pathway, aren't we? It's the, it's the awakening. It's, it's Neo's awakening moment in the Matrix, isn't it? You know. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's and that and that film is just incredible, by the way. But there you go. Obviously. There's so many predictive films, isn't there, that yeah. showed us what the future were, whether it's Blade Runner. And I'm not a big film buff, but I did like my films. Yeah. Chris is more of a film buff than I am. Mm-hmm. But it, but there, there were so many. You look back now, and there are so many that yeah. tell us what the truth is, really. And, and you, know, you, I always wondered about, you know, the fact that Warner Brothers is the Time Warner company. 
Time Warner. The Warner is about time. What could happen in time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think there's even Time a T-shirt in the Warner Brothers. Yeah. Ah, Warner yes. Brother. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. see, I never made that connection. That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, Time Warner. Why is it called Time Warner? It means nothing, does it? It's just words. Yeah. Oh, just before I, I, I kind of have to sign off, guys. Um, <clears throat> uh, something you mentioned last night. Uh, was it last night when you released the Min Source? I'm, I'm, I'm losing track of days. Sunday. Yeah. 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 Yesterday. The, the most recent one. Um, and you talk about the, it might have been something I said about predicting something. Um, what it was, if anybody's confused about that, is um, it's about how people uh, towards the end of this year and into 23 are going to begin to understand what their true life purpose is. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, mm. So if anyone oh, yeah, was me, thinks Josh. I was Sorry. talking about, oh, it's all going to kind of wrap up by the end of 22 or into 23, <laughs> It's not going to happen. But what is going to happen is that we're all going to find our true life purpose. You know, we're all going to start going down that route. Um, and like you said, Dom, it, it, this time has created some amazing things. Uh, I mean, lockdown itself, the silence for about two or three weeks, four weeks, going outside, hardly any cars on the road, and, and the whole of nature just like, it was just amazing. It was, I'll never forget that experience. Yeah. And I was cycling um, to Cambridge every day. It was beautiful. It was Cambridge on a Saturday, full sun. Yeah. No one there. Unbelievable. It was bizarre, but kind of yeah. nice as well. <laughs> no planes in the skies, no chemtrails. Was it about four weeks of glorious sunshine that we had or something? I can't just mm. remember. But it's, uh, yeah. And and in, in it's strange that we and we're all annoyed, I suppose, but we're all annoyed for the reason why. But we're, they were actually stopping us doing things that were toxic for us. Yes. So, so yeah. they unknowingly to wasn't part of their plan. But yeah. They stopped doing toxic things to us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's well, you know, absolutely true. <laughs> I often said to you, Don, that it, and I don't want to sound like a nut job here, but um, there was an element of excitement to it because we watch films, don't we, to see drama and excitement. Mm-hmm. It was happening right under his nose. Yeah, yes. You know, and as long as you know, you could keep your brain about you. It was an interesting process, you know. Yeah, it was. I mean, uh, it still I'm, is. I'm not saying, you know, yeah, it still is. I mean, it's horrible and nasty things aren't true, but good things have happened to other people and yeah. good things have come out of it as well as much as bad things. But, you know, yeah. you do feel bad for anyone that bad, bad's happened to them, but you can't help but think, you know, we, like I said, we watch films and that wanting some drama and excitement that were happening right under his noses. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and you could see through it very easily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. So transparent. It works. Yeah. So transparent. Yeah. Which, again, these people, things uh, who are running this uh, show do not want you to know what they're doing. No. And we knew, and lots of other people knew, mm. that it was a scam. Yeah. Which makes me feel good that we talk about it like we're talking now and like we do as Mint Sorry. It just yeah. makes me feel good that we're just, you know, lifting them stones up and talking about it and ridiculing it and laughing about it as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's wonderful. And uh, and again, one of the guys said, uh, you know, I, I sat there thinking, wow, this is genius what they've done, you know. And the guy said to me, uh, well, if you think this is genius, wait till you see what we can do. And um, basically, reverse all this inversion of reality and, and the truth, uh, Dom, that, um, you know, we talked about how all that is actually going in the totally opposite direction for them. And they can't stop it. The beauty of it is, is they can't stop that reversal. No, they're forcing that. That's a natural thing, what you're talking about. Absolutely. They're, what they're doing is trying to turn it the other way around when it's naturally occurring anyway. And Yeah, yeah. they're going against the grain. And, and I will say this, that the amount of effort that these controllers have put in over thousands of years to yeah. control the human race is just incredible. But yet we, just through, say, a simple meditation, can actually take ourselves out of all that, yeah? We can remove ourselves from all that. And just with the power of thought, just like that. And these buggers um, are, are just trying... Every, they're chucking the pots and pans at us now, aren't they? Come on, let's... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, they don't stand a chance, but there you go. So on, on that bright note... Uh, I think it might be <laughs> it might be opportune just to kind of uh, 
you know, say farewell. But thank you, guys. It's been absolutely brilliant. I've totally enjoyed this. And like you say, we've been in the time machine and now we're having to come out of it and uh, realise that, you know, we've got that UFO missing time thing going on. Um, so <laughs> it's only been 10 <laughs> minutes, but it's been a good couple of hours probably. Yeah. But um, just to say thank you to everybody who's tuned in. Uh, please do check these uh, wonderful guys out if you haven't done already. I'll put all the details in that section that I never know what it is on YouTube that gives you all the links. You can put your links yeah. in. I'll put you, your... Any, uh, any what they call that, by the way? I have no idea what they call that section. I'll put your uh, the URL on our website so people go, who go onto our website will watch it through the website Fantastic. onto your channel. That's brilliant. Cheers, Dom. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, so check it, check these guys out, folks. Um, do subscribe to the channels and and you know our channel respective channels uh keep up to up to date with stuff that's going on these guys will tell you the 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 research truth i'll try and give you as much spiritual truth as i can as, as what i feel as i'm getting um and thank you very much for tuning in so uh chris and dom you've been brilliant thanks jonathan and, uh, we'll it's been great very very soon we will cheers mate thank you very much See all you. right take care both